Hey, so here's another video. Um, so I wanted to talk, break down diasporic traditions versus um, African traditions. And we're talking about diasporic, we're talking about Haitian voodoo, we're talking about Lukumi, we're talking about Kondoblé Ketu, Kondoblé Angola, Kondoblé JJ Mahi. Um, and then African, of course, we're talking about African Vodun, um, Afa, um, Goro Voodoo, or what they call Tron, um, Ifa, traditional Ifa, Risha worship. Um, yeah, so when we're talking about diasporic traditions, um, a lot of people I've noticed, you know, this has been all going on for a while, is that we try to re Africanize our traditions because um, we feel that, you know, we have a right to. Um, be connected to African traditions and by going to Africa we feel like a, a stronger connection and that we should you know change some of our practices accordingly and there's a lot of pushback between that um, from both sides there's um, traditionalists on both sides of, of the water who want to oh forgot 21 division sorry I don't want to forget the Dominicans um, um, traditionalists from both sides saying no this is not the way we do things we want to keep it like this oh sorry i don't know i don't know so much about shango baptist like i know it mostly from a research point of view so I, I haven't had any experience with it so i can't talk about it so I'm just talking about the things i've had experience with um but you know there's a lot of fighting going on because um people from ifa um, go into um, diasporic traditions like Condomble, like Lukumi, and say, you know, we have the same status as uh, the diasporic tradition person, priest, or a Babalao. And I don't really see it that way. I mean, yes, from a spiritual level, from a training level, from a spiritual authority level, yes. Um, I've not seen in divination or even in possession that that can be disputed, that a Cuban Babalao and a, a Nigerian Babalao are seen in a similar way from a spiritual point of view from when an Arisha comes out of possession. I agree with that. Same thing with Al Arisha, um, whether come from Nigeria or, um, you know, they come from Lukumi or they come from Condomble. Um, they treat them in the same type of respect. What it comes down is to the human stuff, the protocols, um, different languages, liturgical languages. The prayers are in different languages. Um, and these pray there's different symbols used. There are drawings on the ground sometimes. Um, different foods. Um, and these are all, you know, a lot of it, especially in the diaspora, they're adaptations to what was here. But... We also can't forget that there's lots of trade and um, assimilation that happened in Africa, too. There's lots of uh, foods that are common in Africa that are not from Africa. They're from over here. So there was a going back and forth between, you know, the different um, lands across the water as well as Europe and Asia. So it's not like it's, you know, the same. Um, it was just all over here in the Middle Passage. You know, we're all messed up over here because we're, you know, enslaved. Um, there's, there was lots of going back and forth. Um, so I think all the, the diaspora, the diasporic traditions and African traditions are all valid. The priesthoods are valid. Um, but when it comes down to the spirits, they are different. And I know this from experience because, um, most people know, like I did a lot of, I traveled a lot in the last year and a half. I did a lot of different initiations and, let me tell you, when I'm done doing a huge sacrifice for one spirit, and then people tell me, let's say Ogu Farai is the same spirit as Ogun, mm -mm, nope. You go to Africa, you know, you do divination, Ogun's like, where the hell is my shit? Like, he, he, they're like, he's like, you didn't give me anything. You gave the other guy something. Um, the same thing, you know, in you know, Nigerian tradition, um, or even contemplate. Like, when you talk about Orishas, there's more... Um, commonality, like you give something to Ogun and Kondomble, it's going to be the same if you give it in Nigeria, if you give it to in uh, Gu in Togo, it's going to be the same. But there's some ones where they're not the same, so it's very confusing, but 
to blankly see, I see people talking about all the uh, Nago, Lawa, or Orishas, or all the Congo, Lawa, or Nkisi, not true, not true at all. Um, cause like I said, I've actually had to feed them almost twice, three times, you know, in different countries and do it again at home. And it's not the same. It is not the same. It's a totally different spirit. They also come in possession differently. They talk different languages differently. If they talk at all, they behave differently. Some of the offerings are a little bit different. So what you give Ogu Farai, you're not going to give the Ogun. It's just sometimes it's similar. Sometimes they may have similar tools, but they're not the same thing. Um, and that's a cross between Arisha and Lawa or even Lawa and Vodun. So you have Dambala. Dambala is, you know, a snake Lawa is white, doesn't like um, alcohol, likes things very clean like specific things like eggs, almond, syrup, etc. Um, lamb. When you go to Africa, when you go to Togo, Mommy Dan or Dan, the Vodun, he likes things white, but he likes some other stuff. He likes things that you will never give to Dumbala uh, in Haiti. So, and it, you will cause a problem insulting Dumbala if you gave him that. So there's, there's uh, also the way you create... Um, their shrines are, are different as well. Um, Don is not Oshimari. Um, it's it's a little bit differences between traditions, and it's very it can be very 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 confusing for me because I practice different traditions. I don't keep them in the same area, so my like my stuff for Haitian Vodou or vo- Voodoo is different than the stuff I have for Arisha, and my Vodouns are only. No, actually, only Vodun shrines I have, I have three. So I have Hebioso, I have Don, and I have Sakpata. And Don doesn't have a problem being next to Oshimari or being the same Igba as Oshimari. Sakpata does not have a problem being the same Igba as, as Babaluaye. But that's because they have a really close connection from Africa. Um, Legba doesn't have a problem being next to Eshu because they're so similar that they're almost the same entity. Papa Legba is not Legba. Papa Legba is not Eshu. So they're on totally different um, compartments, different, um, you know, obviously Papa Legba has bags and stuff on the, on the walls, but different sides of the room, different areas, different rooms. So, yeah. Yeah, Ogu Shango is not Shango. Um, Shango from Espiritismo is not, or even Umbanda is not Shango. Um, and this is hard to conceptualize for people, but you have to think a lot of people, if you're, even if they're not from a Christian background, they know what, you know, Catholicism and Christianity is, you know, you know, Jesus, you know, became a God. That's a path. It's called apotheosis is how a man becomes into a divine being. This happens all the time. We're talking about. Um, Buddha, we're talking about um, many different bodhisattvas, we're talking about various gurus. This has happened in many different cultures where people have ascended to a divine state. And But it seems like when it comes to black people, they act like it never happened or it never could happen. Um, most of our Arishas, are, that's probably what happened to them. Um, most no- notably Shango, because Shango was a real person and he's a real king and he has this historical record. The mortal Shango. The room name on uh, Shango is different, but that's just, or Oya, those are just two examples of people who actually live and, you know, they've gained this divine state and they come back. Um, This similar thing happens in Umbanda, similar thing happens in Spiritismo, but to a lesser degree. They have um, connections to these various elements of vibrations and they have connections to these traditions, but... um, they are not that specific spirit. They're not a god. They're a spirit that has aligned itself with that particular energy, particular force of nature, or even um, human or uh, worldly con- concept or construct, and that's how they affiliate, and that's how they'll use that name. This happened a lot in Haiti. So um, most of, I mean, I will get in trouble for saying this, but I don't care. A lot of Haitian Loire are not African. 
they are spirits of African people, African slaves, African warriors, African generals, people who fought in the revolution, who have achieved apotheosis just like everybody else, and they're now worshipped and they're now used, but um, they're not the same thing. It's the same thing with Apollo. The only Nkisi you will ever find in both in uh, Kanomble, Angola, um, Apollo, and Congo is in Sasi. The rest of them are kind of, you know, you know, a crapshoot. No one knows what I'm, who, who Mama Chola is in Brazil. Mama Chola is in the Congo. Um, no one knows who Lucero is in Brazil. Lucero is not in the Congo. They call him a different Nkisi who does similar things, but he's not Lucero. Do you understand? So each country has different... Um, different permutations of the same energy but they're linked to different spirits and sometimes those spirits are real historic living people who lived and they have become aligned with that energy so they adopt that name or that surname and it can be very confusing for people so i mean like we're talking about spirits who are called eshu so you have eshu trakahua you have eshu tdd um so many different eshus none of those eshus are eshu the Risha. None of those eschews are even the same eschews that are in, like you'll show up in Cuban Espiritismo, or even will show up as a Legua and a Lucumi. None of those spirits are the same. They all do similar functions. They all have a similar energy, wear the same colors, but they're distinct um, because these are real people. And most eschews from Brazil are real African, usually Angolan spirits. Some of them are European, some of them are Brazilian, but most of them are um, from Africa. Um, that were brought over here. So they weren't deities, they were people. Um, a lot of, and the same thing with ha uh, Haitian Loa. So even though Urzuli Freda, um, Dahomey, that's where her name comes from, but she is not Ezili or Ezidi from um, the river in Dahomey. She is not that deity, she is not that Vodun. She acts very differently. Um, Azidi from, from, um, if you ever see her, um, in Condom Blade JJ, Azidi acts very different. Or you see Azidi in, happen, which is rare, in like Togo, Benin. Does not happen, does not act like Azuli Freda. Does not take the same things as Azuli Freda. She is not white or blonde or light skinned. Um, same thing with, uh, Avelekete or Ayisan. And actually, the Haitian Loa. Ayizan is Ayizan Velekete. So she's actually two, she has names from two different Vodouns together. And that's why she associated with the palm tree or the palm frond. The palm frond is from, is the Voduna Velekete. Ayizan is, is the Vodun in the marketplace. But in a uh, Haitian Vodou, there's only, there's one that's kind of a conglomerate of the two. And she has both names, even though there's more than one Ayizan. But, um, same thing with Agaro, same thing with Bosu. Um, there isn't really a Bosu cult in um, Africa anymore, but there's many different Bosus in Haiti, and they act like um, how they're depicted in um, Dahomey, where they're, you know, half, almost minotaur type uh, people, but that's how they act in possession. Are they really a minotaur? You don't know, but um, that's how the image, and that's how you see them, that's how I've seen them. But in possession, they act like you know, almost like a minotaur. Um, same thing with uh, Marasa. There's no Marasa in, in uh, like in Dahomey. There's, uh, there's Hoho V, there's Toho V. Um, there's twins and triplets, but they're not the same as the ones in Vodun. So what I'm saying is people don't understand. When I'm in all these different traditions, I have different shrines for all these traditions. My Marasa shrine has nothing to do with my Beiji Be Be shrine. It has nothing to do with what I do for Ho Ho V. It's like my, for Shango, I have three different Shangos. Like I have Shango, I have Agaju, and then I have Hebioso. And they're on different, they're in different spots, different drums, different pillars. They're not all together. Um, like I said, the only two Voodoo's I have that are, and Risha combos together, or a Sakpata Babalu Aye, 
and Don and Ocean Mari. Those are the only two I have together. Everything else is separate. Um, I don't. I have also have a separate um, Govi for Dombala. I have a separate Govi for Papa Legba. He has different bags for Papa Legba. I don't mix anything. I use different herbs um, for. I don't use my Ifa herbs for Voldoon unless they're the same herb, or just with different names. But um, I don't practice together. Um, I don't use the same rattle for my. You know, I have a son, obviously. I don't use my Asan to work with African Vodun. There's a other that have a um, Shotzi. It's a diff. It's similar, but it's different. Um, I don't use the bells I use in 21 Divisions or Vodun for African Vodun or Orisha. Um, I don't even when in Africa they mix some things in Hinduism. Um, I have different statues for when I use it for Mami Wata and then when I use it for Hinduism. My Shiva statue I use for for communicating with Shiva is not the same Mami Dan Shiva I have at my Mami Wata shrine. Um, they're different poses, um, different paths. So my regular Shiva, I have the dancer, the cosmic dancer, um, dest- destruction, I forgot forgot i know it starts on the end <laughs> but i completely forgot it uh sorry for this video we're not talking about hinduism but um i have a different shiva than the one i have for a mommy john i have a different parvati than i have for a mommy um i have a different hanuman than that i use for mommy Wata shrine as or tron than what i would use for working with hanuman so um you know i have little statues sometimes and sometimes i have larger ones um, and they're all bronze, but they're for different purposes. And so what I'm trying to say is that diasporic traditions are, you know, their, their own traditions and they should be respected as such. Um, no one has really, and a lot of us, we have this entitlement stuff. No, no one of us has really entitlement to a tradition unless it's from our family, meaning we grew up in it or, um, we were raised in it. So like in a lot of, in a lot of Haitian communities, I can see how, you know, I took it as almost, um, feeling like an outsider when I went to Haiti, but I'm starting to understand why, because the spirits are really Haitian and Dominican spirits. So if you're not Haitian and Dominican, um, you have to almost be introduced into it. And so there's no automatic get into, um, voodoo just because you're black stuff unless you are descended from haitians somewhere along the line which could be per um, could be possible because a lot of haitians went through other different caribbean places and they also um fought in various wars in the united states and they've dispersed themselves within the african-american population especially in south carolina so there are a lot of people from down south there have haitian dna in them so they have haitian spirits and they don't know why but that's a that's a um, ex, ex, um, an exception. Most people who are not Haitian have to be introduced to these spirits if they don't pick them um, to begin with. So, just because you're in a diaspora or have a certain type of passport doesn't automatically make you entitled to any of these traditions. Because remember, a lot of these spirits were slaves. A lot of these traditions were made by former slaves so if they're not these spirits are not from your family then everyone is basically a guest an outsider because you know even in haiti we're different you don't work with 15 20 50 loa you work with two three four five in each family and that's what they work with and that's all they work with um, they're they're knowledgeable of other ones, but they work with the main core to go with the family. Similar in Nigeria, you have different towns that are more associated with certain rishas, and they'll work certain rishas different ways. It may be different from town to town, and similar in Togo and Ghana and Benin, how they do work with different Vodun certain ways, and it may be a difference between each place. I mean, if you're American, I don't care how black you are, how mixed you are, even if you're Caribbean, um, we're all kind of outsiders when we get in these traditions. So um, a lot of the entitlement of, oh, this is my tradition because I'm from here and this is my 
this is in my bloodline and everything else. If you're not in the tradition already and you weren't taught and you weren't initiated, you have to get in reinitiated. You have to get initiated. There's no through the blood stuff unless they already talk to you. Uh, I mean, they're already appearing to you. But even when they already appear to you, they're eventually going to push you towards initiation if that's in your path. If you they just want to alter, then you get help from another priest to set it up. But um, yeah, that's just my my thought on the different traditions. Um, like I said, each one has their own protocol. They all were, you know, these have been developed over decades, centuries. So it, they all should be respected. It doesn't make one tradition less effective or worse if they have bits of Spanish in it or bits of Portuguese or uh, whatever because everyone has bits of French over in Africa or English so uh, even if you go down south in the Congo um, Portuguese as well so there's no pureness I mean there's lots of different vegetables and offerings that come from here um, there was no corn in Africa corn comes from over here so, um, there's, you know, there's lots of, um, traditional offerings for these spirits that come straight from over here. So it's not like everything was in a silo. So, um, I think the, po most of my point was just to be more respectful of other priests, be more respectful of initiations within different traditions and not to, um, just not, yeah, stop this entitlement shit. I don't know if it's less millennials per <laughs> more, or just being, you know, everyone thinks they're black and they can practice everything, but you have to be initiated into different things. You have to put your dues in. And it's really not just about the money, because if you're really supposed to be in the tradition, the money will come. I used to not believe in that shit, but with me, it really did come. Um, you know, and it's, it's always a choice, because I could have used the money for something else. And it just happened when it happened. And just... Everybody has to train. Everyone has to take time. It takes work. They will test you. You will go through life changes. It's There's no instant, you know, I do initiation and I'm going to be able to, you know, fly or I'm going to be a millionaire. It Sometimes it does happen to people with the money part, but most people know. It's um, you finding your destiny, you trying to find your purpose, which may or may not be what you're doing at that moment. So if you're not doing what's your purpose is you may find things start or not living your purpose or not align with your purpose you may find after initiations things in your life start falling apart because um they're moving removing things that are not supposed to be there and it can be painful it can be frustrating it can be sickening it can make you really angry <laughs> but um they especially when you're talking about arisha they look at the long-term picture versus the short term so yeah, you can do all the juju you want to get simple things, but at the end of the day, they're going to start moving things that are not beneficial for you out of the way, and that may be a job. That may be uh, a girlfriend, um, a boyfriend, uh, a, a spouse. It may be family members. It may be um, a living situation. And you might say, what the fuck? What is going on? There's, you know, everything was supposed to be great. And... It really is it's supposed to be for the long term. It's supposed to be something that's towards, you know, your betterment. So, yeah, I'll conclude this video because I'm starting to sweat. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Bye.